Hello, Mark Johnson here. And I want to talk to you today about why you train and how you train. Now, this is going to get a little philosophical, but I think this is really going to be helpful for you if you stick with me. And if you stick with me, I'm going to, towards the end of the video, do a demonstration of a good triceps exercise you can do no matter where you're at and without any equipment and I'll show you ways you can make it easier or harder depending on your level of fitness and then how you can make progression so I hope you'll stick with me so I want to ask you the question why do you work out now that may seem like a really obvious question but let's dig beyond the surface. The reason I'm asking the question is because sometimes how we work out may not be the most efficient way to work out in terms of our goals. Now, I don't know what your goals are for working out, but I'm gonna share with you my goals. These don't have to be your goals. But when I work out, there's two main goals that I am trying to accomplish. The first one that I'm going to mention is fitness. And for fitness, two things I wanna talk about. The first one is adequate muscle mass, adequate lean muscle mass. Now, I'm not trying to be a bodybuilder, but the more I read, the more I discover that as you age, the more lean muscle mass you have, the likelier you can be healthy and the longer you'll live. And so I wanna train in a way that either builds muscle mass, maintains muscle mass, or at least loses muscle mass as slow as possible the older you get. Now, it's not only having muscle mass, but I want that muscle mass to be functional. In other words, I don't wanna just be able to, you know, bench press or squat or deadlift a lot. I really don't even care all that much about that. But whatever muscle I do have, I want there to be a balance of strength, flexibility, and coordination. And so I want to train to accomplish that particular purpose. Now there's a second dimension of fitness, and that would be cardiovascular fitness. And that may, again, mean different things to different people in terms of varying goals. For me, uh, it's not about wanting to run a marathon, and I'll talk to you about marathons shortly, but it's about, you know, I want to be able to carry something up a big flight of stairs and not be winded. I want to be able to, you know, help somebody move and outwork them and not be fatigued, you know, after, you know, a little bit of work. So that's the fitness piece. Now, the other piece for me in terms of why I work out and my goals would have to do with health. I'm focusing on working out, but of course this also would all have to do with how you eat and how you steward your life in general. But I'm talking mostly about working out. So health, and by health, there's two things I'm focusing on. One is to be as free as possible from sickness, and the other is to be as free as possible from injury. Now, of course, there's no guarantee you can be completely free of sickness or injury, but the point is, is I wanna train in a way that minimizes the likelihood of me getting sick or the likelihood of me getting an injury. I wanna train in a way, eat in a way, steward my life in a way that I can uh, Put the odds in my favor of being as healthy as I can be. Now, those are my main goals. They may be yours, they may not be. But here's why taking the time to identify that is important. Some people are training in a way that might be counterproductive to those two goals that I mentioned. For example, if those are your goals, then the next question should be, how can I train most efficiently to reach those goals. And this is kind of the first in a number of upcoming how-to videos that I'll probably put out uh, about once uh, a month on uh, this kind of a, a topic. But let me give you an example of what I mean. If your goals were the same as the two I mentioned, fitness and health, you're probably not gonna be a National Football League player. Now, National Football League players have fitness 
but you'll notice they are not very free of injuries. In fact, they all get hurt uh, sooner or later. So they check the box of fitness, but not the box of health in terms of trying to be free of injury. Uh, you probably wouldn't pursue competing in mixed martial arts if uh, your goal is health, because again, sooner or later, uh, you will get hurt. Now, if your goal is to compete in football or compete in mixed martial arts, that's fine. But as long as you realize that if your goals are fitness primarily and, and health, those would not be uh, the protocols that would lead you to that end goal, but would be counterproductive. So the same would be true of marathons. I'm not against marathon running at all. Uh, when I was 45, I ran my first marathon, and then in my sixth marathon at age 50, I qualified for the Boston, and at age 51, ran the Boston Marathon, and then that was the end of my uh, marathoning. Now, I learned a few things about running marathons. First of all, uh, running a marathon is counterproductive to muscle mass. Uh, look at an elite marathoner compared to the physique of an elite sprinter. And the differences are immense. And so when you're running long distance, it's working against preserving or gaining muscle mass. So that level of fitness um, would be counterproductive. Now, in terms of cardiovascular health, okay, a marathon runner, uh, that may cause you to you know, check that box. But I read that the week of a marathon, runners, marathon runners are 50% more likely to get sick than non-marathon runners. And that's because as they've been peaking and doing their last couple of long runs, their immunity system uh, is compromised and so they're more likely to get sick. And all marathon runners, sooner or later, do get hurt. So uh, again, you would not be able to pursue maintaining muscle mass, and you would not uh, be pursuing staying free of injury uh, or optimum health. So then that brings us the question, well then, uh, if I really do have those same two goals of fitness and health, then what are the most efficient protocols for accomplishing that purpose? How should I train? How many times a week? How long should a training session be? Those are some of the things that I will address in the next video. Now, powerlifting would be similar. Uh, if you were trying to stay free of injury, you wouldn't probably be a powerlifter. Now, many of you probably uh, lift free weights, uh, and uh, we'll talk about the importance of intensity when lifting to improve muscle strength and mass. But how can you intensely lift weights so that you're building muscle and yet reduce the likelihood of injury? So that's what we're going to talk about in the next session. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do a demonstration of a triceps exercise, a good triceps exercise. You can do anywhere. You won't need equipment. And I'll show you how to make it easier, how to make it harder, so you can start where you're at and make progressions. All right, I wanna demonstrate a triceps exercise you can do no matter where you're at and no matter what your level of fitness without needing any equipment. It's called a diamond push-up. Now, regularly a push-up is more of a pec or chest exercise, but when you bring your hands close together in the shape of a diamond, then it becomes more of a triceps exercise. Looks something like this. I'd suggest you go slow, maybe two seconds up, four seconds down. Now, what if you can't do a tricep or a diamond push-up? Well, then you can do it on your knees, like this. Now, if you can't do it on your knees, you could go to a step and do it on your knees. But once you can do the diamond push-up on your knees, then what you can do is slowly move your knees further and further from your hands 
until you're doing a full diamond push-up. Now, let's say your protocol is eight to 12 repetitions. What happens if on the floor on a regular diamond push-up, you can do 12 repetitions in good form? Then what? Well, you could go slower, but here's another option. Elevate your feet and it makes it much harder. So I will go on the first step like this and then do a diamond push-up. Well, what happens once you can do 12 reps there? Go up to the second step. What happens if you can do 12 reps on two steps? Go up to the third step. Now, I would suggest not going above three steps or it becomes more of a shoulder exercise. So, what do you do if you on two or three steps are able to do 12 good reps. Well, you can slow your pace down, but a third thing you can do, or a second thing you can do, is to add a weight vest. Now, I said you can do this with no equipment, so if you do not have a weight vest and you don't wanna buy one, probably most of you have a backpack somewhere around the house. Put a backpack on, and if you have some free weight plates, five pound, 10 pound, whatever you need, put it in the backpack, put it on, and do your diamond push-ups with the backpack with weights. If you don't have any free weight plates, throw whatever you have in there, can of soup, whatever it may be. So those are some ways you can take really most any exercise, find, a progression that you can do and then work at making it harder and harder until eventually you can reach your goal. And once you understand the principle of progressions, you can get creative, experiment a little bit, and you can find ways to make every exercise a little bit easier or a little bit harder to meet your needs. So on the next video, I'll demonstrate another exercise.